Hey y'all, it's Leslie Ann from Life in 5th Grade. And as you can tell today, we're going to talk about how I do status of the class. Status of the class is something that I do at the beginning of every one of my classes. I have three classes, so there's a notebook for each class. I take status of the class to monitor my students' independent reading. And as you can see, or as you will see, this keeps up with what book each student is reading and if they're making progress or if they're not and if they're having a problem about abandoning um, every book that they read or not understanding it. So what I'll do is take one of my notebooks and I'll open it up and we'll go through a week so that you can see exactly what I do and how it will help you understand more about your students reading habits. Okay, like I said, I have three classes, so I have three different notebooks. So for my first class, or for every class, I'll pull out the notebook when they come in. As soon as they come into my class, they'll sit down, they'll unpack, they'll begin their warm-up. And as they're working on their warm-up, I'll take their status of the class. So while they're working, I'll take out my notebook, I'll open the notebook up, and I will have the first recorded date up on the first, and then I'll just flip to whatever date we're on. So let me zoom you in so that you can see it a little bit easier or better. So as you can see, I have all of my students listed. I have what book they're currently reading and what page number they're on. I'm going to take you through how I write everyone down and uh, what the little symbols mean and why some of them are colored the different ways and what that tells me every time that I look and reference the book. Okay, so looking at the date, I can tell that on Monday, March 14th, if I'm looking at Brian, he was reading, I have a bad feeling about this, and he's on page 26. But then I noticed that I've put an A here, which means that he's abandoned the book, but it's in a different color. So that tells me that on this day, on Monday, he's reading this book and he's on page 26. But the next day, he's going to be reading another book because it's in the same color which will make sense a little bit more when we go to the next day. So if you're kind of confused, it's okay. You'll get it when we go to the next page. If we move on, Kate is reading El Defo. She's on 217. And then she also has a symbol right here, an F, which means she's finished the book, and a T, which means she took a test on that book. And as you can tell, that's in the same color, which means I wrote that down the same day. So she took a test and finished the book on Monday because it's all in the same color. Moving along to the next student, Colleen on Monday is reading Inside Out and Back Again and she's on page four, so clearly she's just started the book. Jesse has just abandoned, because there's an A, he's abandoned Bad Magic and I know that he abandoned this book on this day because the A is written in black. And if I look at Haley there on the far right, on Monday she was reading This Journal Belongs to Ratchet and she's on page 43. Same thing with Tori. On Monday, she's reading Harry Potter number two. She's on 199. Ben is reading Roller Girl, but as you can tell, he's left that at home. So if they ever leave their independent reading book at home, which does happen, then they'll just pick up another book. It could be a chapter book off the uh, library, or they can just read a picture book just for enjoyment, unless it becomes a habit of them leaving their book at home, and then they have to just pick another book. Brody on Monday is reading Dogs of War. He's on page 80. James is reading Oh Valentine, We've Lost Our Mind. And on Monday, he's on page 25. But as you can tell, there's a T in a different color, which means he takes the test on that day, but he doesn't tell me about that until the next day, which again will make more sense when we're on the second day. The next three students are pretty easy to understand. Heather's reading a book, she's on page 76. Jessica and Anna are both reading books and they're both on page numbers. They're not taking a test, they're not abandoning books, so there's no codes beside their names. Tracy's reading the 14th Goldfish, same thing, no code, she's reading. If a student is absent, as you can tell Ben was absent on Monday, I do mark down that they're absent, which also helps me take attendance. Aaron, Andy, Mary, those are all easy to understand. There's no codes, which means they're just reading the book. They're right in the middle of it. There's nothing to write down to symbolize that they're abandoning a book or taking a test or finishing a book. Jackson um, has finished Dead End. It was a book called Dead End in Norvell. He loved this book. He finished this on uh, this stage. You can tell it was a lengthy book. He took a test. He made a 100. I put a smiley there because that was such a big accomplishment for him. He had read that book throughout the semester. 
He loved that book. He always told the class what was happening in that book and he finally finished it on that day so that was a really big accomplishment. I'm gonna hold off talking about Tucker, the last name on the list. I'm gonna look at him and show you throughout the week what he read and what he did because that's really the beauty of status of the class. It really shows you the student's reading pattern and you can really see it really well with Tucker. Okay, so I have taken the status of the class for Monday. I'm finished. I put the notebook away. The kids finish up their independent reading time and then we begin class. I don't get out the notebook again until the next day. So when the kids come in the second day, they'll come in, they'll unpack just like they did the first day. They'll begin their warm up and as they're working on their warm up, I'll take out this notebook again and I'll turn to the second page. So I'm going to flip to the second page and as you can tell, I've used a different colored marker. This helps to know when the kids are taking tests or finishing books or abandoning books on what day. So we'll go through each one and I'm going to flip back and forth because when I take status of the class, I'm constantly flipping back and forth to see what a child was doing the prior day. So when I start off, I always start with Brian because he's the first box. So I'll ask him, I'll flip to the page and I'll ask him if he's still reading a bad feeling about this. And at that point on Tuesday, he told me that no, he abandoned the book. That's when I took the color marker that I was writing with that day and put the A. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now that we're on the second day. So he's told me that he's abandoned this book. I've marked the A and I've asked him what he's reading now. Now on Tuesday, he abandoned, I had a bad feeling about this for the book Dead End. This is the perfect example about how abandoning a book is not always a bad thing. Brian was currently reading on Monday, the prior day. He was currently reading I Have a Bad Feeling About This, but because he was excited about the book Dead End when it got free, when Jackson finished it, he abandoned the book that he was reading for this book because he had become so interested in it. So abandoning a book is not always a bad thing. So moving on to the second student, when I get to Kate's name, I'll flip back when I'm asking her, I'll say, are you reading El Depo? But then I'll see that I've marked down already on the same color. So I know that the day before she had finished that book and she took a test on it. So I'll ask her what book she's currently reading. So on this day, on Tuesday, she was reading Sunny Side Up and she was already pretty much every student, it goes that way. They'll, I'll ask them what book they read the day before, if they're still reading it. And I'll ask them what page number they're on. So I'm not going to go through every student because that would take forever and it basically is the same process. The codes that I use, the little letters and the, um, the different color markings, what that tells me, that's the only thing that changes throughout the day. If they're absent, I'll mark that down and then I'll just ask them the next day that they come in what they're reading. Let's look at Tucker though, the last name on the list because he, that status of the class is the perfect tool for him to show me his reading habits and what we need to work on. So on Monday, this is the first um, page in the book. This is when we first started status of the class for this notebook. So on Monday, he was reading The School for Good and Evil and he was on page 23, but as you can tell, it's on the same color. He abandoned the book that day and he picked a new book. I didn't ask him what book he picked, or I asked him what book he picked that day, but I didn't write it down until the next day. So if we flip, the next day on Tuesday, he's picked up a book called Manga Touch and he's on page 13. He doesn't abandon the book that day. He doesn't take a test on the book that day. He doesn't finish it that day. He's just reading the book that day. The next day, Wednesday, he's still reading the book. He's on page 35, so he's making progress. Again, he doesn't take, the te take a test on the book. He doesn't finish the book. He doesn't abandon the book. He just reads the book that day. On Thursday, he abandons the book. So he made hardly any progress in the book he abandons the book and that's the second book in a row that he's abandoned because if you look back to Monday he abandoned that book so that tells me that for a week he hasn't successfully read anything that he's enjoyed or wanted to stay with so that tells me that I need to go with him to the library and we need to pick a book together that would be a better fit for him so status of the class is perfect for helping students pick out books or knowing when you need to get with a student and work together to find a book that would be a good fit. It's also good for tracking what books students enjoy reading the most and coming up with new recommendations for them. A perfect example of this is Colleen. On Monday, Colleen reads Inside Out and Back Again, which Colleen was a big reader anyways, but she reads Inside Out and Back Again. She finishes that in three days, um, which is not a, it's not a, a very long book, but it is 
it's not one that normally a fifth grade student would read in three days. So that tells me that she really, really enjoyed that book. She made a 100 on it. She completely understood it. Then she picks up Gone Crazy in Alabama. So that tells me that Colleen enjoys historical fiction. So I need to pull some more stories that I think Colleen would enjoy. So that's how I do status of the class in my class. Again, we do this at the beginning of every class. The kids come in, they unpack. As they're working on their warm-up, I'll take their status of the class and ask them what book they're reading and what page number they're on. I'll mark down if they abandon a book, if they take a test on a book, or if they finish a book. And it really helps me go back and look at their reading patterns and see if they need a conference to make better book choices. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. If you want the editable template for the cover pages, I'll leave the link down below. And there's also a link where you have an editable um, sheet that you can fill out that you can enter your students' names down um, and print off to use in your class. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.